Hello everyone! In this video I will explain how to add and subtract fractions. Let's start with fractions having the same denominator, also known as like fractions. For example, one quarter plus two quarters. I'm sure everyone can add this. It's three quarters. We simply add the numerators, 1 plus 2 is 3, and copy the denominator, 4. Let's use a drawing to clarify this. Take a look at this circle. Since we are discussing quarters, I will divide it into four equal parts. We'll do it here roughly. Now we will first color one quarter. There. This is one quarter. Then two more quarters. There. One. Two. And now the question is how much of the circle is colored? Obviously three quarters are colored. Since we have four equal parts we are talking about quarters, three of which are colored. We'll use a similar method to subtract like fractions. For example, three quarters minus one quarter. So we have three quarters, these three here, and from them we have to remove one quarter. There, we removed one quarter. How many are left? We are left with two quarters. We subtracted 3 minus 1 is 2 and just copied the denominator 4. So, let's repeat. We easily add and subtract fractions when the denominators are the same. You simply add or subtract the numerators and copy the denominator. However, what do we do when the denominators are not the same? How do we calculate then? Let's take a look at such an example. Let's take 1 sixth plus 5 ninths, for example. Now the denominator is not the same, so we can't copy it. So, what to do? First, we need to bring the fractions to a common denominator. Let's draw a long line for the fraction and find the lowest common multiple of 6 and 9, our two denominators. This means we are looking for the lowest number that can be divided by both 6 and 9 without any remainders. Let's try to come up with that number. How do we do it? First we choose higher of these two numbers, number 9. Now let's list the multiples of number 9 and try to see if any of them are also a multiple of 6. The first multiple of both numbers is the one we need. This will be our lowest common multiple and also our lowest common denominator. So, what are multiples of 9? They are 9, then I add another 9 to it, so it's 18, then I add 9 again, so we get 27, then I add 9 again, so we get 36, then 45, and so on. Now let's take a look at them in order and see if one of them is also a multiple of number 6. Can we divide 9 by 6 without remainder? The answer is no, we can't. We would have a remainder after dividing. So the number 9 cannot be the lowest common multiple of 6 and 9 because it's not divisible by 6. Let's try with 18. 
Can we divide 18 by 6 without reminder? Yes, we can. So that is our lowest common multiple and lowest common denominator as well. Now, what numbers will be the numerators? How can we calculate them? Watch and see. Let's take a look at first fraction. Let's compare the denominator 6 and the common denominator 18. With what do I need to multiply 6 to get 18? I'll have to use the same number to multiply 1 to get the right numerator here. So, let's see. With what do I need to multiply 6 to get 18? The answer is 3. Then, I'll also multiply 1, the upper number, by 3 as well. 1 times 3 is 3. Now I copy the plus. If I had a minus here, then I would copy the minus. And now I'm looking at the second fraction and thinking in the same way. I'm looking at the denominators 9 and 18. With what do I need to multiply 9 to get 18? The answer is 2. So, I will multiply the numerator 5 with 2 as well. 5 times 2 is 10. Now I got the appropriate numerator. So, this first fraction, since we multiplied the numerator and the denominator with 3 was expanded by 3 and we get 3 eighteenths. These two fractions are equal. Expanded fractions are always equal to the original fractions. So 1 sixth and 3 eighteenths are equal fractions. The second fraction, since we multiplied both the numerator and the denominator with the same number, number 2, was expanded by 2 and we get the fraction 10 eighteenths. Expanded fraction is always equal to the original fraction, so the fractions 5 ninths and 10 eighteenths are equal. So the fractions we got are 3 eighteenths and 10 eighteenths, which are equal to these starting fractions. Let's now finish adding them. 3 plus 10 is 13, and we simply copied the denominator 18. This way we got to our solution. We have added these two fractions. You don't have to write this bottom part. Usually we don't write this part where we are looking for the common multiple. Let's go through this calculation once more. I will solve the same task again, but a bit quicker. The normal speed actually, to see what it looks like. First we draw a long fraction bar. Now we look at the lowest common multiple of 6 and 9. I won't write anything below right now. How do we find the multiple? I spot the higher number, which is 9, and I list its multiples one by one, and for each one I ask myself if it is also divisible by 6. I write the first divisible one here. This will be the lowest common multiple. So let's go. The first multiple of 9 is 9 itself. Is it divisible by 6? Nope. What is the next multiple of 9? 18. Is 18 divisible by 6? Yep. Then I write 18 here. Don't mix things up and go dividing 18 by 6 and write 3 over there. Do not divide. I'm only asking myself if 18 is divisible by 6. If it is, I write it here. I write 18 here. Now let's calculate the numerators. We asked ourselves, 
with what do I need to multiply 6 to get 18? With 3. Then I have to multiply the upper number with 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Another way to do this is instead of asking what to multiply 6 with to get 18, I can divide 18 by 6 and get 3. So I will get the same number. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. Now I copy the plus. Then over there, instead of asking what to multiply 9 with to get 18, which is 2, I can ask how much is 18 divided by 9, which is also 2, times 5 is 10. This is the more common way of doing it. 18 divided by 9 is 2, 2 times 5 is 10. Now we just calculate 3 plus 10, which is 13, and we copy the 18. Let's look at another example. 7 eighths minus 5 sixths equals a long fraction bar. I look at the denominators 8 and 6. I look for their lowest common multiple by spotting which of these two denominators is higher. 8 is higher. I list its multiples and for each one I ask if it is divisible by 6. When I find it, I write it here. The first multiple is 8. Is 8 divisible by 6? Nope. What is the next multiple of 8? 8 plus 8 is 16. Is 16 divisible by 6? Nope again. What is the next multiple of 8? 16 plus 8 is 24. Is 24 divisible by 6? Yes, it is. So I will write 24 here. Don't forget, do not divide by 6 and write the solution here. Just ask if 24 divisible by 6. Yes, it is. So I write 24 here. Now let's calculate the numerators. First we have to calculate with the first fraction. I'll divide 24 by the lower number, then times the upper number. So let's do it. 24 divided by 8 is 3. 3 times 7 is 21. Now we have a minus here, so I copy the minus and do the same calculation with the second fraction. I divide 24 by the lower number, then times the upper number. So let's do it. 24 divided by 6 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Equals, and then simply calculate this. 21 minus 20 is 1, and we copy 24. And this is the solution to our task. Before we move on on the next task, I need to point out that in this video we will not learn how to reduce our solutions. Only the basic method of adding and subtracting fractions is shown here. Reducing solutions will be shown in the next video. Solution reduction is an important step in this calculation, so I definitely advise you to take a look at the next video. You can find the link in this video's description as well as at the end of this video. Let's move on to the next example. 9 tenths minus 1 fifth long fraction bar. Once more we take a look at both denominators and look for the lowest common multiple. First spot the higher number which is 
10. So let's list its multiples and see if any are divisible by 5. The first multiple of number 10 is 10. So I ask myself, is 10 divisible by 5? Yes, it is. So number 10 itself is our lowest common multiple and also our lowest common denominator. In this task, one of the denominators we are given, number 10, is also the lowest common multiple. Students often get confused when something like this happens for the first time. So let's go over it again. We spotted the higher denominator, number 10, and I asked myself if it is divisible by 5. The answer is yes. Therefore, 10 is the lowest common multiple. Let's now calculate the numerators like we did in the previous examples. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 1 times 9 is 9. Copy the minus. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Now I subtract. 9 minus 2 is 7 and copy the 10. I'd like to point something out that happened for the first time here. When one of our two denominators appeared down here and we divided 10 by 10 equals 1, 1 times 9 equals 9, notice that we simply copied the number 9 here. But why? Because we also copied the denominator 10 here. So if we copy the 10 here, then we copy the 9 over here as well. But we need to calculate the other one. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Let's try another example. Here we have uh, 4 fifths plus 1 fifteenth equals again we draw a long fraction bar and look for the lowest common multiple of the numbers 5 and 15. Once more we look for the higher denominator which is 15 and we list its multiples and ask if any of them are divisible by 5. So, what is the first multiple of the 15? It's 15 itself. Is 15 divisible by 5? Sure is. We found our lowest common multiple, 15. It is also the common denominator. Now we calculate the numerators, always starting with the first fraction, then the second. So, let's start with the first. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12. Copy the plus. Now the other one. What did we say a couple of minutes ago? If we copied 15 here, then we copy 1 here. If you want to do the calculation, you can. 15 divided by 15 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. You can do it by calculation or you can just copy it in this case. And we calculate it to the end. 12 plus 1 is 13 and we copy the denominator 15. Now I will show you the final example and then come tasks for you to practice on your own. 3 fifths plus 2 sevenths equals long fraction bar once more. Let's find the common denominator. I'm looking at the denominators 5 and 7 trying to find the higher one which is 7. Let's list its multiples. The first one is 7. Is 7 divisible by 5? No it isn't. What is the next multiple of 7? 
7 plus 7 is 14. Is 14 divisible by 5? No, it isn't. What is the next multiple of 7? 14 plus 7 is 21. Is 21 divisible by 5? No, it isn't. The next multiple of 7 is 28. Is 28 divisible by 5? No, it isn't. Next multiple of 7 is 35. Is 45 divisible by 5? Yes, it is. So 45 is our the lowest common multiple and the lowest common denominator. We can notice here that our lowest common multiple, 35, turns out to be the same number we would get if we multiplied the denominators 5 and 7. 5 times 7 is 35. This happens when the denominators are relatively prime integers. So, students who know what relatively prime integers are can simply multiply them when they see them as denominators to get the lowest common multiple. Notice that in our previous examples we did not have such cases. In one example we had 5 and 15 which are not relatively prime integers, so the lowest common denominator, 15, is not the result of 5 times 15. Same thing over there. 8 times 6 makes 48, but that is not the lowest common multiple, which is 24. Let's get back to our task. Let's calculate the numerators. 35 divided by 5 is 7. 7 times 3 is 21. I copy the plus. 45 divided by 7 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. And now 21 plus 10 is 41 and I copy 35. I hope these examples made adding and subtracting fractions clear. I remind you that reducing solutions is not explained in this video. These tasks are actually set so that you couldn't reduce the solutions. However, we often get a solution that can be reduced. And in that case, that step needs to be done as well. In my next video, I will show you what needs to be done with the solution and the way we can and must fix it. I advise you to watch it because this is also a part of finding the reduced solution when adding and subtracting fractions. And now here are some exercise tasks. I advise you to take a pen and paper and copy them. Try to solve them on your own and then continue the video to see if your solutions are correct. So pause now and start your calculations. Pause the video now. And here are our solutions. I hope you got everything right. That means you got the hang of adding and subtracting fractions. In the following videos I will show you how to reduce solutions and mix things up by adding and subtracting mixed numbers, natural numbers and decimal numbers. Now please like this video and subscribe my channel. Have a nice day!